So hopefully by now through the readings you understand that the general idea is to plug in unless something breaks. If we plug it in and we get just a number, we're not divided by zero, we don't get zero over zero, then we're going to be able to say that is the answer, that is the limit. The problem comes up when we get something divided by zero and we have to look at it in a different way depending on the situation. So I thought that it'd be good to go through a couple of examples like that as well as a little bit of this idea of the uh, limits with the f, uh, f of x and h going to zero. You'll see what I'm talking about once we get there. So we'll go through about four examples in this video. As my first example, this limit, hopefully you can already see when I go to plug in, I'm going to end up with a problem, but we're going to say, okay, I got a limit. I don't care what the function looks like. I'm going to try plugging in. So when I do this, I say, okay, I'm going to plug in that minus three. I get minus three squared plus minus three minus six, and then I end up dividing by minus three plus three. Now I'm feeling kind of lazy right now, and I look at this and I say, okay, yeah, that's not hard. I can calculate that, but the problem is down here. I end up dividing by zero. So I notice that before I do anything else. I'm going to end up with something over zero. Now as lazy as I want to be, I kind of need to know what this is, because if this is also zero, it tells me one thing. If it's a number other than zero, it tells me something else. So let's see, up here I end up with 9, minus 3, minus 6, that looks like 0 over 0. So this is an indeterminate form. Indeterminate means it tells us nothing. So I can't do anything with this. It doesn't tell me if the limit exists. It doesn't tell me what the limit is. So I'm going to have to try a different method. So this does not help me at all. This is definitely not an answer you want to circle. That's not a final result. Usually for us, we're going to end up factoring or doing something algebraic. Take a look at our actual function up here. So I'm going to rewrite part of this, but not the whole thing. So limit as x goes to minus 3, the numerator is x squared plus x minus 6. Now, wouldn't this be x plus 3 times x minus 2? Does that numerator factor into that? Take a look for a second. It does, and the fact that it factors should be noticed just because of the type of function it is. You got an x squared plus an x minus a number. That won't always factor, but it means you should look into that first as your first plan of attack. Now I'm dividing by x plus 3, and these cancel out. So really, this is the limit as x goes to minus 3 of x minus 2. And that would be minus 3, minus 2. Notice how I'm plugging in again. I did some algebra, then I plugged in. And when I plug in, I end up with minus 3, minus 2, which is minus 5. Now that, once you plug in and just get a number out, you're good. So that is my answer. The answer is minus 5. So the first step when I plugged in, I ended up with something that didn't help. It made me go back and say, does something factor? Does something cancel out? Which will really be all that you see in this class. So you're going to check for that. Once you simplify it, then plug in you should get your actual result, which in this case, like I said, is minus 5. So that's when you end up with an indeterminate form. What I did in the next example was change things just a little bit. As you can see here, I'm now taking the limit as x goes to 3, and I changed the denominator. It's not really that important what I changed. It's what's going to happen. Now, the numerator is still the same, so the numerator still factors. But let's pretend we didn't even remember that, that this is a whole new problem. We haven't even ever seen it before because you're always going to just try to plug in first. So when I plug in, I now get 3 squared plus 3 minus 6, all divided by 3 minus 3. Okay, I see I'm going to get 0 on the bottom, but what happens on top is the most important. So I get 9 plus 3 minus 6. So I end up with 6, this looks like, over 0, because I get 9 minus 6, which is 3, plus 3 is 6 over 0. This is not an indeterminate form. If you plug in and you get a non-zero number, that's a 6, over a 0, you're done. Now this isn't your answer, and this certainly does not equal 0. That is certainly not true. This is not a final answer, but it tells me what the final answer is. And the answer is DNE, does not exist. If I end up, when I plug in, with a number over 0, then my final answer is the limit doesn't exist. That's a signal to us that the limit does not exist. So those are really the two situations you'll run across when you're plugging in and things don't just, quote, work out, work out nicely. Something broke. A very vague term, but hopefully you can see what I mean by that now. Zero over zero, you got to do more work. A non-zero number over zero, 
you're done, the limit doesn't exist. All right, so what about these other things I was talking about? You may have noticed uh, in the problems uh, 65 through 68 in your textbook and a couple of the assigned ones, I give you this thing called a difference quotient. So let's look at one, what one looks like. Here's a difference quotient. You're given a function, f of x, in this case it's 2x plus 3, and you're asked to find this complicated looking limit with the function. It turns out this is a big deal in our next section when we talk about derivatives. Uh, well, that's actually for the whole next test. So when we talk about derivatives, we'll deal with this quite a bit. That's why we're practicing this now. It's a special type of limit. When you see the f of 3 plus h, like up on the top, it's telling you to plug 3 plus h into the function. f of 3 is telling you to plug 3 into the function. And then the limit involves h. Really, this is an algebra problem with a limit at the end. You're going to find a lot of calculus works out that way, where it's a lot of algebra and then just a tiny bit of calculus. So this function, essentially, I need to simplify and figure out what it actually is. So I'm going to rewrite this. The limit as h goes to 0. And then f of 3 plus h, I'm going to find this first, figure out what that is. 3 plus h, I'm going to plug into x the 3 plus h. So this is going to be 2 times 3 plus h plus 3. Okay, that's just that piece. Now I got to subtract f of 3. That means I need to plug 3 in for the x down here. So this is 2 times 3 plus 3. Don't need that right there. Now I still have the h there, so I'm going to divide by h. Before I do anything with this limit, I'm going to simplify to see what this comes down to. Now this 2 distributes, so it's going to be a 6 plus a 2h plus 3. And then this negative is going to distribute onto this, but this is just 6 plus 3, which is 9. So this is minus 9. And don't forget your limit is still there. And then I'm dividing by h. It's not necessary to write the h goes to 0 every single time you write this out. Now, this looks like it simplifies just a little bit more. So this is the limit. 6 plus 3 is 9, but then we have a minus 9. So that's gone. So this is just 2h over h. And these h's cancel. Notice I'm not plugging anything in yet. I'm just trying to see where this goes. Let's see, this is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2. Anytime you have the limit of just a number, the answer is the number. That's one of those properties, that huge list of properties you have in your textbook. That's one of those properties. So if this was a 5, the answer would be 5. If this was a 10, the answer would be 10. So all this work was algebra until this very last step. So this limit actually turns out to be 2. And like I said, this, this is actually a, a derivative of this function. And later on, you'll be able to see uh, how this all works out. The only place where this can get more complicated, because it's mostly algebra, is if you're dealing with functions that are more complicated and make the algebra more complicated. That's really it. And it's really just a rehash of algebra skills. So in this last example, what I did was I kept the same numbers in the top, but I changed it to an x squared plus 3. So my method is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to plug in, and then I'm going to simplify. So this would be the limit as h goes to 0. Now f of 3 plus h the 3 plus h goes right in where the x is. So this would be 3 plus h squared plus 3. So that's this piece right here. Now we got a minus and then f of 3. Okay, I'm going to put that in parentheses because it's minus on the whole thing. f of 3 means put a 3 here, so this is 3 squared plus 3. All right, now I'm going to divide by h. There's nothing to plug in because there's no f down here. Now here's the thing. 3 plus h squared, you know what most people would do, and I don't want you to do this? This is certainly not true. Squares do not distribute, so this is not equal. That's probably the most common mistake I see. It's an algebra mistake. It's not a calculus mistake. There's no reason for it. Remember your FOIL? You have to FOIL this. So 3 plus h squared is actually 3 plus h times 3 plus h. In other words, this is going to be 9 plus 6h plus h squared. A little bit different than 3 squared plus h squared, right? So again, that's probably one of the most common mistakes I see when people are doing this. So this term, that's just this term, becomes this. So this is actually 9 plus 6h plus h squared. Now it's a plus 3, 
and then it's minus, and then this is 9 plus 3, so that is 12. And don't forget, we're still taking a limit. You've got to bring that along. Okay, I'm not done simplifying. I'm not going to take the limit till it's as simple as I possibly can get it. So let's see, I got, I'm looking at the numbers. I got 9 plus 3, that's 12, minus 12. That's 0. The numbers are gone. All I have left is 6 h plus h squared divided by h. And this is the limit of 6 plus h. Don't really need the parentheses there. I'm not really sure why I felt the need to put them there. They didn't really affect anything. Now, what happened to everything here? This h canceled out, actually. What I did was I factored out an h. This is h times 6 plus h over h, and these cancel. The other way to think about that is these two cancel, but you can't just cancel these two. You've got to cancel it in everything, and so one of these cancel. But I think this is a much better way of doing it. Now, before I can figure out what this limit is, I gotta remember what I'm taking the limit of. h goes to 0. So this would be 6 plus 0. Now notice, as soon as I get it simplified, I plug in, and I end up with 6. Do you notice that in this problem and the previous problem, lots of stuff canceled out? If you're doing a problem like this and that doesn't happen to you, it's a big hint that something went wrong somewhere. You should get a lot of cancellation. Not everything. It shouldn't be crazy. It shouldn't be cancels out all to zero. And I'm not sure how you would get that to happen anyway in most problems. But it should be a lot of nice things happening. In other words, the 12s canceled out of the beginning. And then, oh, look, the H's cancel out. Look at how nice this came out. That's how it should be. If you don't have that happen, you might have made a simple algebra mistake. And that's what I would check for. Make sure you're practicing these problems. I love these problems. I should tell you that you'll see them again. So make sure you practice them in the online homework.